Hey everyone, this is Dylan here, and today I'm going to be going over an AFB culture. So this stands for acid fast bacilli. And most, you know, most commonly when people talk about an AFB culture, they're referring to tuberculosis, but there are other types of mycobacterium and even mycolichibacterium, which was delineated in 2018. Um, you're looking at those two uh, genera of bugs. And uh, you know, when you think of mycobacterium, as I said, you have tuberculosis, but then you have also non-TB bugs. And of your non-TB bugs, you can have rapid growers, which grow within five to seven days, such as like, you know, M. chelone, fortudum, or abscessus is a notable one that we see a lot. And then you have some of your slower growers, um, such as your, you know, my mycobacterium avium complex is a big one. So those are the, some of the bugs you're going to be looking out for when you do this AFB culture. And the reason why you need to do an AFB culture is because these bugs, as I said, some of them take a long time and they're also fastidious. So they require decontamination or processing in order to, you know, be, be sufficiently yielded if you were to do a culture. So, you know, the, the, you know, processing step of AFB, which I'm going to cover next, is very important for killing off any competing non-AFB bugs and for also concentrating the specimen as well. And some of your acceptable specimens for an AFB culture is pretty much anything. Um, but you know, most commonly you're looking at respiratory specimens. And what that means is that in order to rule out TB actually, you have to collect three sputum samples within, uh, I think it's 24 hours, but at least um, eight hours apart between each sputum collection and at least one of the sputum collections has to be first thing in the morning because they say that's when you get the best, uh, you know, best re, uh, recovery of TB if there is any TB there. So, you know, those are some things to keep in mind. Um, but, you know, this processing step is done for every specimen except uh, CSF and bone marrow and obviously an eye specimen because eye specimens tend to be collected bedside by the ophthalmologist. So you can't process that. They just put it directly onto the LJ slant. So an important aspect of the AFB culture is actually processing for it. So what this means is that you're going to be killing off any competing bacteria and uh, basically increasing the yield of any potential mycobacterium or mycolichibacterium. And the, the way you do this is by adding um, sodium hydroxide, which will kill any competing microorganisms, and by adding a mucolytic agent to break down some of your, some of your viscous uh, sputum specimens. And um, so when you add your, this goes by the acronym uh, NACPAC, so when you add that reagent, which has two of those um, components to it, uh, you're gonna wanna do it for 15 minutes. If you do it for longer, then you're potentially going to kill any microbacterium there. And uh, if you add it for less, then you're not gonna sufficiently kill some of your competing microorganisms in the sample. So after you've done that decontamination step, you're going to add a neutralizing buffer, as I said, to you know stop that reaction after about 15 minutes. And then you're going to centrifuge it down and then pour off your supernatants and then you add a little bit of a pellet resuspension buffer. And the purpose of this, once again, is to, you know, um, coney bacteria that are going to be competing with your microbacterium and also to concentrate your specimen. That's the whole centrifug centrifugation step, you know, is that you're concentrating any potential AFB that are in there. Because for a culture, actually, you only need, I think it's like literally only one or two AFB bugs can be in the specimen, and you'll see that in the culture. And then as compared to a smear, you need a much higher load to have a positive smear of let's say like five to 10,000 um, AFB per, I think it's per mil or something like that. So that's just something to keep in mind of why you could have a positive culture. You know, you'll have, you'll have, you'll have growth of AFB, but then your smear may have potentially been negative. It's just because that difference in uh, yield between the two, the two tests. So now that you've decontaminated and concentrated your specimen, the next step is to add it to your media. So for an AFB culture, you actually have two types of media. You have a liquid-based media, which can be like a broth. We use an M MP bottle, and that just gets loaded up into like a, a back to alert machine, which is kind of similar to a, a blood bottle, actually, in terms of how it looks. And the second thing you need is a, a solid media. 
And so we tend to use something called uh, a Lowenstein Jensen uh, slant, or just for short, we just call it, call it uh, an LJ slant. So you put you know, your concentrated and decontaminated specimen uh, onto the slant, the LJ slant, and into the bottle. So after you've inoculated your processed specimen, this is the time to make your smears, smears as well. So pretty much every single AFB culture will have a corresponding smear to go with it. And uh, you know, you can find more about smears in the attached video here. And um, only, uh, yeah, only a couple of weird specimens do not have a corresponding smear, such as like a eye culture that's collected bedside or like a bone marrow, which is once again collected, uh, you know, in, in, in the patient's room by a pathologist, for example. Um, so all other specimens will have a smear and, uh, you know, they require their own uh, staining process, which is quite rigorous. Uh, but this is the time that you make your smears as well. And normally you just use just a couple drops and you use a type of slide that has, for example, two different wells in it. So you kind of look at each specimen twice, you know, one for each well. And then that's done using a fluorescent uh, microscope as well. And one thing to keep in mind when you're making your smears actually, is that, you know, because you're dealing with AFB, that, you know, you don't want to expose yourself to any of the potential harmful AFB, which would be mycobacterium tuberculosis. Uh, you do let it sit on the stain uh, on the heating rack for at least 15 minutes. And then you also put your slides in uh, acetone for five minutes and that will kill any potential AFB that's there, but still make them visible uh, for your stains. So now that you have your media inoculated and your slides prepared, you're all set for the incubation step. So incubation for AFB is done in increased CO2 concentration, and AFB don't actually need the increased CO2 in order to grow, but it does facilitate their growth a bit better. So that's why you do have, you know, increased CO2 for your incubation step. And generally it's about 5%. And then another thing that makes AFB different is that um, incubation is held for a very long time. So we do it for eight weeks, but there is research out there that suggests that you can do it for six weeks and still be okay. Because pretty much if you held it for six weeks, you would still pick up like 99% of any p potential positive growth. So holding it that extra two weeks from six weeks to eight weeks will only pick up like 1% of cases that you would have missed. Um, you know, so there's merit to, to holding it for six weeks. That's what the new data suggests. And if you think about reading these specimens, so remember you have your LJ slant and your MP bottle. So your MP bottle is read on the machine and it's just continuously read. And so if it comes up positive, you know, the machine will, will alarm and notify you of that and then you work it up appropriately. And then when it comes to the LJ slants, they obviously have to manually be read. And so, you know, at our place, we do it once a week, we'll read the LJs. But generally the bottle does come off first. So when you're reading the LJs, you'll typically just pick up the corresponding culture of a bottle that's already come up positive. So let's say you do actually have a, a specimen that's positive after this whole process of you know decontamination and um, a concentration. You know the machine alerts you that you have a bottle that's positive. Well, then you work it up appropriately. So what that means is that you're going to stain it initially to see if it is AFB. So you're going to do your Kinnan stain, and then if it is AFB positive, then you either you know, identify in-house if you have the set, setup on, for example, something like a moldy tof, or you send it out, which is what we used to have to do until recently. You send it out to an institution that, that is able to work up AFB. And then if you're looking at the LJ slant, so you know AFB growth on an LJ is very distinct looking, so you can physically just look at it and you can tell most of the time if it is AFB or not. And if it's not AFB, pretty much the LJ is gonna be liquefied so it's gonna look like here, and you know, that's not AFB, you can pretty much just toss that and then put in the report that, you know, the LJ slant was contaminated with, uh, you know, other bacteria. And then, uh, you know, if it does look like AFB, then you still do your stain just to confirm it. And then after the stain, as I said, you either, you know, identify in-house or you send it out. But you definitely wanna make sure you do that stain before you call it AFB. 
So another thing to take into account is that if your MP bottle has come up positive and you don't see anything on your stain, you know, that is possible, that does happen. And pretty much that just means there's a low load of potential mycobacterium or AFB in your specimen. And, uh, you know, just stain it again. And if after the second stain you still don't see anything, then you have to reload it on the machine. Just give the bug a bit more time to grow in order, in order for you to see something. Because even though the bottle has come up positive, you know, you have to see at least something on a positive kidney stain in order to call it AFB. Um, you may have a defective bottle potentially or another contaminating microbe is there that's not AFB. So you really just have to see something. But sometimes you are stuck in that situation where you just don't see anything. And uh, speaking of contaminating microorganisms, you know, let's say you, you know, you're working up your bottle and, uh, you know, it's staining as Kenya negative, then that does happen too. Sometimes they do break through, you know, the whole decontamination step. Uh, for example, like a pseudomonas may do that quite regularly. Uh, in that case, you have to throw away the bottle and report it as, um, you know, uh, non-AFB contamination, uh, which is similar to your LJ slant. Just remember with the LJ slant, you're actually going to physically just be able to look at it and say, you know, oh, it's liquefied and you don't need to bother with the stain rather than with your MP bottle when it comes up. You know, you can't just look at it. You, you do have to do a stain every time with the MP bottle. And some other things to take into consideration is, you know, how quickly the bottle or the LJ comes up positive. So remember for your AFB, you know, they do have quite long incubation times. You do have your rapid growers and you have your slow growers. Um, so even for your rapid growers, you know, they'll come up, let's say, five to seven days. But if you have something coming up within two days, it's most likely not AFB. And then if you have something coming up, let's say, after four or five weeks, then, you know, be very suspicious of something like tuberculosis and just triple check that uh, slide if you're having trouble to find something because there could be something there. It's just very hard, very scant. But, you know, there's a reason the bottle's coming up positive after four to five weeks. Just, so just keep those incubation times in mind when you're working it up. And if you've reached it this far into the video, I would like to thank you for watching this much. And uh, I do have an interesting, you know, some interesting insights. So, you know, some of your most common AFB bugs that we do come across would be uh, Mycobacterium abscessus. Uh, that's very common. We've even seen that in uh, blood before. Um, so that obviously in blood, it didn't go through the whole processing step. Um, but blood is quite sterile, so, you know, there are no competing bugs in order to, you know, outcompete the mycobacterium abscessus. And, um, you know, we do see the occasional TB as well. And with that, with TB cases, they, the smear tends to be positive because these patients are very sick, so their load is very high. Um, so we kind of know beforehand that they are positive. So, you know, we'll be keeping their eye, an eye out for the cultures for when they come up positive. Um, because, you know, you have to have a, a very high load in order to have a positive smear. And, you know, we did have a case actually where a patient um, did have TB and uh, it was actually co-infected with Staph aureus as well in his respiratory specimens, uh, sputums. And um, the LJ, the, the slants, actually came up positive and there was growth that we saw within just a few days I would say probably about a week. And, um, you know, it's very surprising that, you know, when we did do the stain, it was mixed with Staph aureus and uh, AFB. And so that was quite unusual, actually, for, uh, you know, a positive TB patient for the slant to come up positive so quickly within seven days. Because generally you're looking at, for TB, you know, several weeks, maybe about three weeks or so. Um, so seven days was quite unusual. So the point is you can see some atypical things. So always have to keep your eye out, uh, you know, always be cautious, you know, when you're doing your staining, you know, assume that it's TB. And when it comes to other AFB bugs, you know, they aren't actually, you know, dangerous to a, you know, immunocompetent per person. You know, these are generally environmental bugs for the most part that we're talking about here, not like uh, Mycobacterium leprae, but, you know, your Kansasii, Gordoniae, as abscessus, you know, rapid growers such as abscessus, chelone, fortuitum, you know, these are generally environmental bugs and they're not dangerous with the exception of mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis. But, you know, always be, you know, this is this type of work is done 
in a negative air pressure room, and then the BSC or biological safety cabinet, um, you know, under level three conditions. So, you know, you have your N95 mask and you, you know, you're taking these precautions so you don't expose yourself unnecessarily to anything. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully you know more about the AFB culture and uh, see you next time.